hey guys welcome to Zen components tutorial series in this series we are going to look at some of the general purpose components that can be used in uh, different use cases and uh, today we are going to start with validator component uh, it's a again a general purpose component it can be used in uh, many cases use cases then then uh, some internal components of then itself depend on this component so this is kind of a lower level component that higher level components uh, like Zend form and uh, Zend input filter depend upon so what we are going to do is start with the very uh, basics of Zend component so Zend component uh, if you go to the folder if you have installed Zend framework using uh, the composer installer you would have a windows directory you can open it and go to Zend ZF2 folder open library folder inside there and then you will have access to the Zen namespace folder. This contains all, all of the components that Zen Framework provides. We are going to uh, discuss validators now. So open that up and open the validator interface. So this is the uh, basic uh, functionality that validators provide. This is the fundamental functionality. So first of all, you have uh, uh, the method is valid, which takes in a value and it will check that value against the validation rules of that specific validator if the validation passes for this value then it will return true if the validation fails it will return false and if this function returns false then you can call get messages get messages will return the errors or validation errors specifically that were encountered during the validation process so this initializes the validation process, it checks the values and uh, uh, against the validation rules and, and then the outcome uh, is then returned uh, in uh, as bool. So you either you get true or false. If you get false, then you can call get messages to get the error messages. So two functionalities that this uh, the, base, uh, the fundamental functionalities of validators. So let, now let's look at that, look at a, a practical example of this. So I've included few of these validators. And uh, remember that every validator implements this interface. So you would have access to these two methods uh, in every validator. So now let's start with the string length validator. I'm going to quickly initialize it. string length validator and most uh, most of these validator would take set of uh, options uh, to work properly so for string length you can kind of guess that it it needs a minimum and maximum value that it would be it would uh, the the value will be checked against that we will pass inside a is valid method so let's pass those options so sorry 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 so first of all we have the minimum let's say we want the character count not to be greater than six characters and not l less uh, sorry not greater than 60 characters and not less than six characters so this is now a valid validator in instance now we can use those functions those methods so first of all we have to call is valid which returns uh, uh, bool and let's say uh, let's pass in a value that will actually pass the validation process if that's the case then you're going to write on new view model and which also takes an, an array and I have set this uh, variable inside my view already so we are going to pass it in validation passed so this is quite basic and uh, all the higher level components kind of build from this basic functionality so once you get this functionality in your head the rest of the higher level 
uh, higher level concepts would be a lot easier for you to understand. So you can see that our validation should pass because we are passing in a string which is greater than 6 and it's definitely definitely, definitely less than 60 characters long. So if I quickly show you the view which doesn't contain anything just a, a, a message variable which has been echoed. So if I uh, yeah, close this, now let's see this in action. So this is our script, our uh, controller and it's the uh, the uh, the control which comes with the skeleton application it's not nothing fancy so let's see it an example so you can see our view was empty now we have validation passed so in case the validation fails then you can actually if i just copy this paste it here oh god I'm just gonna print our uh, the error messages. So as we uh, have seen that we have access to get messages method, which will return uh, an array of error messages that were encountered. If the validation f uh, passes, this uh, will return an empty array. So you have to kind of see uh, uh, the outcome of the validation before you call this method. So if the validation passes, this will return an empty array. If you're not calling is valid at all and you are uh, mistakenly calling get messages method f before calling is valid, then you will get an empty array too. So you have to uh, uh, kind of keep this in mind. So our validation is passing, let's fail it. Let's say we have a, a string which is less than six characters long which it shouldn't be so we should get an appropriate error message so the input is less than six characters long and you can see if we got that array if i word on this i think it, it will show up prettier yep so this is the error message that message that we encountered so this is uh, the basic functionality you pass in a value you see if uh, it uh, passes the validation process or not. If it doesn't, then you can get the error messages. So these error messages right here, string length too short, these are already defined inside the validators. So th there are set number of validation errors that could be encountered during the validation process. And those are usually defined at the top level of the uh, validator class, so you can see it. So these are the error messages, uh, sorry, the errors that could be encountered. So we encountered string length too short. You can also encounter st string length invalid. That's probably uh, for uh, values that are not string. Then you have too long, which is for too long. And uh, then we have corresponding error messages for these errors. So too short and we got this error message the the input is less than minimum characters long so these are uh, message variables we are going to talk about them at the end of this tutorial when we will talk about customization so just remember there are a certain number of uh, validation errors that could be encountered by each validator and you can actually customize these error messages we will look at how we can do it in at the end of this video so this is the uh, so what we are doing here is checking one value against a single validator uh, but in real applications you have to check a single value against multiple validators uh, you might be checking multiple values against mul multiple validators we are going to get to that uh, in the input filter component tutorial but for now uh, Imagine you have a use case when you have to check one value against multiple validators. So you have to check check if it is a, it has the appropriate uh, length and if it has, uh, it is formatted correctly. If it, uh, if it is an email address, or if it is an IP. So let's uh, now see how we can 
check a single value against multiple validators so you can kind of think that we can do email email validator email address we are going to stick with the default options for email address you can uh, always uh, kind of uh, override these default options these are the default options you can override them by providing an uh, array option options of uh, sorry array of options like we have done here so we're going to stick with the default well, uh, uh, options for this validator so once you have the validator then you can do and and uh, email validator is valid and pass in a value so our value was Ali so you can see that uh, we are uh, not checking two validators against single value but the problem arises when one of them fails and then we have to guess which failed and then get the messages from it so all of this complexity is managed by another abstraction that is provided inside the validator component uh, itself it's called validator chain but validator chain uh, does it it actually uh, uh, you can pass in multiple validators in it and then you can check a single value against those multiple validators so let's see this in an in action so we have our two validators and uh, let's create our validator chain now and put these two validators in it so validator chain new validator chain once you have that validator chain these parentheses are actually optional so once you have it there are two uh, steps to it first you have to construct the validator chain and then you have to um, validate a value against it so first step is to construct it how do you do that you have to provide validators to it and uh, those validators will be stacked uh, um, like one by one on top of each other let's see an example of this so validator chain attach attach will attach the validator at the top uh, sorry at the bottom of the validator chain so let's add a validator here so we, we can pass string length and we can chain methods attach uh, the attaches kind of a setter so it will always return the validator chain itself so you can chain methods like I'm doing so next one was email email validator so here we have two validators and attach will attach the validator at the bottom so this will go at the bottom and after this this will go at the bottom so at the end we are left with uh, a validator chain which has string length at the top and the second validator is email validator so you can attach uh, validators any way you want so as I've said attach will attach the validator, validator at the bottom uh, there is also prepend validator method which will attach the validator at the top of the validator chain so you have to uh, be wary that at the end what you are uh, left with uh, what uh, the order of validators you are left with so let's uh, see how we can validate uh, the values using this validator chain before we go deep into uh, constructing and the options that are available to you for that so if we go uh, to the validator chain class so this is the validator cha uh, chain class and we have used attach method you would see that it, uh, it in itself implements this validator interface that we talked about so it has access to both of these methods that we used for single validators so we can kind of use our validator chain instead of uh, using the um, the a single validator so now our value will be checked against both both of these validators and uh, uh, if some of them fail uh, we can get the error messages using get messages 
so in this case get messages will have, will actually merge all the error messages that were encountered by different validators so all of them will be merged inside a single array so you, you can see that the value we passed to our validator chain is neither our email address uh, nor it is appropriate to be passed against string length validator so we will first of all have the two short error message because our uh, first validator in the chain is string length and then we will have the email address uh, error message so now let's see this in action so you can see first we got the two short error message from our string length validator and then we got the email address uh, in valid format so uh, the order in which they were uh, uh, merged or produced you can uh, kind of guess which validator ran first so this validator the string length validator ran first and then the email address ran and it produced it, it, uh, it its email address in valid format error so uh, Remem uh, remember that you have to be wary of the orders these validators are run inside the validator chain because that's important to uh, uh, understand the uh, the some of the other features that validator chain provides. So as I've said that you can actually, if I prepare this validator in in, in instead of using attach method, prepend validator. So as I've said that prepend validator will take the validator and put put it at the top of the validator chain. So first we had the attach. So this is the first in our validator chain. But right after it, we attached the email validator, which will uh, using the prepend validator method that made the email validator go at the top. So you can see the order now. So email address ran first and it produced uh, is its email address in valid format error and then the string length ran and it produced its string length to short validator error so this is the difference between attach method and prepend validator method there's another option for uh, that you can uh, use which is called break chain on failure let me close this and go to one of these methods you can see it implements uh, sorry it has a uh, last option last argument or parameter which is break chain on failure which is by default set to false if i show you the documentation documentation right here you can see that first we had the validator interface as the first parameter and the second parameter is break chain on failure which is by default false and same is the case for our attach method so attach method and we have the parameter validator interface which we passed uh, using the string length validator the second is uh, break chain on failure which we ignored and by default it was false so if we put true here what this does is if this validator will fails if this validator produced any errors the rest of the validators ins uh, inside the validator chain are not run at all they are ignored so to see an example you can see that prepend uh, will a uh, add this validator at the top of the validator chain so if i run this you would see that email address uh, sorry the string length validator didn't run at all email address ran and it produced an error and the second option was true that made the the validator chain ignore any other validators inside it so this is break chain on failure uh, this is useful for uh, forms when you have let's say an email address form you don't want to tell it that it's too short and too uh, or too long and it's not a proper format at the same time you might want to uh, produce just one error at, at a time because at the end these validators will be used inside higher level components like Zen form so these error messages are the messages that will be displayed to the user if it uh, um, if it uh, inputs an invalid value for one of the fields inside the form so 
you can see these error uh, messages are quite cryptic these are not uh, uh, user fr friendly for general users or general public so there is an, uh, another option for you to override these error messages and it's quite simple you have to mention the error you want to overwrite and then pass in the message that uh, you want to be displayed upon that error so uh, let's quickly have a, a overview of what we have done so far so this is the basic functionality of validators using is valid method you pass in a value and see if it passes or not if it doesn't pass the validation process then you can call get message method get messages method and uh, you can then display the error messages that were encountered and the second thing was validator chain where you can uh, attach multiple validators to check to be checked against a single value and uh, uh, the options uh, uh, the parameter break chain on failure will break the validation process for any other validators if the corresponding validator fails and now let's talk about customization which is uh, overriding the error messages so let's use the string length validator and override the two short message so for string length to run I have to make this false or just ignore or ignore the second parameter so what this will do that uh, it will run all the validators inside our validator chain if this one fails so let's uh, customize this error message so you can see the error that we encountered which was string length too short it's very simple using just one method so string length set message and the message is uh, the string is too short and the error was or the message key is uh, uh, you can actually copy this sorry if I copy this and paste it here you would see our error message message will be customized the string is too short so this is the customized error message that we uh, assigned to our why hmm this shouldn't have worked it's not a string <laughs> uh, X save this so it works I don't know why that worked it should have produced some error or something hmm some of the features I don't know about PHP okay so um, this is supposed to be a string so this is not a correct way of doing uh, this so you can actually access these error errors uh, using the string it, uh, the class the validator class itself so we are dealing with the string length class and the uh, error we are uh, we want to deal with was too short so we can say too short too long too short so for our string uh, length too short error we want to display this message so this is this will produce the same output so, and another feature when you are setting messages uh, is the uh, message variables which we kind of looked glanced over so if I go to the validator itself so this validator you can see has these message variables you can reference these message variables using this syntax question mark message uh, variable name and then uh, sorry not question mark it's a, a percentage sign then variable name and percentage sign now let's use that so uh, just to demonstrate so the string is shouldn't be less than minimum and more than maximum 
max question uh, sorry question day sign and then characters so you can see that these uh, message variables were uh, replaced with the values so this is how you customize error messages and uh, when you are using validator chain there are some aliases for these two ma methods so you can uh, you should know what the these uh, methods do right now we have discussed them so there are aliases that can be used to uh, if uh, attach by name like attach by name or prepend by name so you can provide a name for the validator and the options let me show you uh, an example for this so the name is the alias of the validator and uh, the options are the options that we passed inside our uh, um, constructor of the validator so if I do attach by name if I get rid of this attach by name so the first is the name of the validator so which is zend validator string length <coughs> the second is the options array you can copy this for that and the third was break chain on failure and uh, break chain on failure will be provided for every uh, validator that's used for attaching uh, validators to the validator chain so so this is uh, this validator which will be produced by some sort of factory uh, for us is similar to this one except you cannot set messages for these validators so if I refresh this the validator uh, ran and it produced the error but you can see we cannot kind of uh, we cannot customize these validators that are generated automatically by a validator chain so this is uh, just a handy feature for you uh, if you don't want to go through all of this initializing validators and then uh, attaching the instance of the validators you can just pass in uh, the validator name and pass in the options uh, that you want to set for those validators so this is uh, the string length validator which comes with the uh, uh, Zen uh, validator component so this is a generic uh, validator so all of them have uh, string length have aliases like that like this uh, instead of passing in a fully qualified class name we can just uh, use an alias for those uh, fully cl qualified class names and these aliases are defined inside a validator plugin manager you can see we are using string length which uh, expands to the fully cl qualified class name for the, that validator so uh, you cannot use um, these uh, aliases for validators that you create yourself uh, using the validator interface so it's I, I kind of stick with uh, the more programmatic approach to this so attach by name get rid of this I think this is better because you can uh, customize and if you uh, are uh, if you encounter encounter some error you will be uh, I, I like this approach let me show you why so here we are uh, passing in options like we did uh, for our uh, factory option which is attached by name uh, if I make a mistake here you would see that minimum you, s you see we got the error uh, for that validator uh, if I make a mistake here am I you can see that minimum um, validation uh, rule was ignored 
because uh, I have uh, not named it properly here so and I didn't get any errors as well so there's a better way to of doing this which is using the actual abstraction provided for these options set max so every option that is provided for uh, any validator inside the validator component uh, of Zen framework these options could also be set using the uh, um, these uh, setter methods so our max was 60 and our min was set min minimum was 6 so this is equivalent to the array option that we provided uh, but by using this if you make some mistake it would be uh, um, notified by the PHP interpreter so it produced the same error or oh sorry uh, same string length error if I make a mistake here now you would see that we will get an error because that method is not defined at all so call to undefined method set mn so uh, it's up to you which approach you like if you uh, like uh, these shortcuts that are provided by the validator component you can uh, use them or you can use this approach which is more programmatic I think because there are a lot of these kind of array options and uh, it kind of everywhere you can see them so I prefer not to use these arrays where possible so this is the validator component of send framework uh, next tutorial is about filters and after that we are gonna we are gonna talk about input filter component so let's uh, talk about next video which is filters zen framework filters thank you for watching